Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for the address is Luke chapter 2 verses 13 and 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, send down your Holy Spirit on us. Enter into us and open our hearts to your word so that we may see who you really are and what you have truly done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The shepherds sit around waiting and hoping for a quiet night. They watch their sheep. They don't want any trouble from predators or thieves. A quiet night is a good night. But then in an instant, the night is like day. The shepherds are startled. They, their full attention has been gathered. The brightness brings with it a heavy weight that they've never experienced before. It's heavy, but it's heavenly. They tremble in fear under the mass of light bearing down upon them from heaven. This is no predator. This is no thief. Something is going down. How to explain what is transpiring before their very eyes. Then this heavenly, heavy thing speaks out of the brightness and the light, saying to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. That is not enough for these simple shepherds to hear. Then suddenly there was an angel with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those of whom he is pleased. The angels went back into heaven. What did the shepherds do with this great burden of information left with them? They left their sheep. They left their sheep out in the field and they said, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. The weight of this event left its mark on them. This glory, the angel, and its heavenly entourage was so intense they could do nothing but go and see this Saviour lying in a manger. As we've heard today and have heard every Christmas, they found Mary and Joseph, they found Jesus, in swaddling cloths lying in a manger, the sign revealed to them by the angel of God. We are told of the shepherds. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. What does God's glory do to you? Shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. How would you explain this event to someone who had not seen it? How would you explain this? Now we hear this gospel message every year, every Christmas. But how do you explain all that the shepherds saw? And how can we repeat the proclamation today with the same enthusiasm and excitement as that of the shepherds? For us to share 
in the excitement of the shepherds with a willingness to repeat their sounding joy, we need to allow God the Holy Spirit to open up this text, this tick text, this Christmas gospel for us. Then we can intimately share in the first Christmas, the event of the first Christmas, and therefore repeat it to those who do not know what this everyday earthly but heavy heavenly birth does for all of creation. Three times in the reading, we hear this reading every year, and three times in this reading we hear of glory. What is the glory of God? What is it? How do we explain the glory of God shining around the shepherds? The heavenly choir singing, glory to God in the highest. And the shepherds glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. The glory of God has a huge impact on the shepherds. They saw it shining around them. They heard it heralded by the heavenly host. Then they continued in this glory after seeing Jesus. So what is this glory? In the Old Testament, glory simply means to be heavy. In a bad sense, it can mean to be a burden or it can mean severe. But in a good sense, it can mean numerous, rich or honourable. It means to be weighty in either a good or a bad way. That's what the word glory means. When God revealed his glory to Pharaoh through Moses, it is both a burden to Pharaoh but also a joy to the Israelites. When the glory of the Lord covered Mount Sinai, it appeared to Moses in the burning bush first, but then on Mount Sinai again, and when it filled the tabernacle and later the temple, people did not take God's glory lightly. It was a heavy thing. In fact, the people of God feared the intense weight of God in his glory when it appeared. Even using God's name was a hefty thing for the people of Israel because they feared saying it in vain and discrediting the weight of God's glory. In the New Testament, Greek glory is doxa, from where we get doxology, or words about glory. In fact, the angels and the hosts of heaven praise God with what we would call a doxology. This glory is to please, to think well of, to be of good reputation. With the Old Testament meaning to be weighty, we can see that glorifying God is to give the greatest weight of pleasure to him. He is worthy of the best of our thoughts. He is worthy of the best reputation among us. Doxologies appear quite often when we acknowledge God's presence with us. On the end of the Psalms, we say glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. At the end of the Lord's Prayer, which King David, which comes from King David, from Psalm 145, he says a glory similar to it there in 1 Chronicles 29. And we also say the great glory, or we sing the great glory in church. We sung it before, we said it before actually, and then we sung Joy to the World just after it. It's a combination of the great gloria. And also the holy, 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 we'll say it again later on in the liturgy. Glory to God in the highest. They're all combinations of doxologies. Praising, praise the Son because we're in the presence of God. Now the shepherds heard, saw and felt the full weight of God's presence when the angel appeared. In fact, when the angel left and went into heaven, when the angels left and went, the shepherds didn't say, let's go and see what the angel told us, but rather said, let's see that 
which the Lord has made known to us. Did he say angel? Now much is made of angels today. Many angelic experiences are over-personified and in doing so glory is taken away from God. However, angels are messengers of God. We get the word good news from the Greek euangelios, which means, which means good message. Angels are messengers. Even if they're named in scriptures, like we think of Gabriel, we think of uh, the other Dan, uh, in Daniel, when the, the angel Michael, Archangel Michael, we don't think of them, we don't look to them, but to God in whose name they speak. This is why the shepherds say, the Lord, rather than an angel, had made Jesus' birth known to them. The doxology of the heavenly hosts or the angelic choir also functions in the same way. They announce God in all his glory, in his weighty glory. In fact, this is the first time the heavenly choir is heard on earth. We are accustomed, maybe a little too accustomed to it these days as we sing in God's presence and the great gloria and the holy, holy, holy in the liturgy. But we sing it because God is present. But when Jesus was born, the, the heavenly choir was heard for the very first time, the very first time on earth. So we do well to be in awe of God being with us today in all his weighty glory, just as much as he was then before the shepherds. As we join the heavenly choir each time we sing or say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Or any other doxology. Glory to God in the highest is the great glorification of God. It is the heaviest pleasure that we can bestow upon God. And now this glory shines all around the shepherds and they pass it on to all whom they see. All who heard the shepherds marvelled and wondered at the news, at the message. These shepherds had continued the messenger work God had shone on them through his angelic messengers. Angels sing glory to the Father, a glory to the God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Not only is this glory given to God as the ultimate praise, but it's also given to the shepherds. It's also given to you, to us, those with whom God is pleased. It is God's pleasure, God's good pleasure, in fact, in the highest to give you peace. Peace to those with whom he is pleased, in Jesus Christ. Such is the weight of this event that we receive the gift of love from God the Father, wrapped in glory and swaddling cloths. With the psalmist, we do not look to our works or idols, but look to the gift of God in the manger and say, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. That's Psalm 115, and it basically says the same thing in the Titus reading today too. We see the steadfast love and faithfulness of Jesus in human flesh and trust his work and word that his flesh now speaks for our flesh, fulfilling the will of God. This is the will of God done in heaven and on earth, bringing peace to us and pleasure to God. 
The gift of God covers us in His glory. It wraps us with His victory over sin and death on the cross. We are covered, wrapped with the forgiveness of sin. This is the will of God to wrap you in His love, in His forgiveness. So let the Holy Spirit unwrap God's glory in you. So that having seen and heard the gift of God, like the shepherds, you continue to glorify and praise God to all whom you meet in these days. Amen.